In this video, we'll apply the concept of even and odd functions to the expectation values of the harmonic oscillator model system. So we'll remind ourselves the harmonic oscillator is a model for the vibrations of atoms. Two atoms here connected by a covalent bond. The strength of that bond is specified by a spring constant k, which gives us the potential energy v of x equals 1 half kx squared. X is equal to displacement away from the equilibrium bond length R0, where the bond length is R. And we have our alpha, which is of interest in the wave functions of the harmonic oscillator, is the square root of the spring constant K times the reduced mass mu over H bar, where the reduced mass is the product of these two masses, M1, M2, divided by their sum, M1 plus M2. Okay, so we have three components to our harmonic oscillator wave functions as we previously saw. Normalization constant, Hermite polynomial, Gaussian function. So our Hermite polynomials at each order for H0 is going to be an even function. So our Hermite polynomial is a polynomial of order uh, n as it's specified here. The first one is an even function. The second one 2c is an odd function, 4c squared minus 2 is all even, 8c cubed minus 12c is odd, etc. It keeps oscillating back and forth between odd and even. The normalization constant is always an even function, it's just a constant value. And the Gaussian function e to the minus alpha x squared over 2 is even because if you substitute in minus x there it gets squared, so it ends up being an even function. All right, so we have even times even or odd times even. So if we have an even value of our quantum number n, which starts at 0 and goes up to infinity as an integer, if it's even, then we have even times even times even, which is an even function. If it's odd, then we have even times odd times even, and that gives us an odd function. So what about psi star psi? So psi star psi, or the magnitude of the wave function squared, that's equal to even times even, or odd times odd, both of which end up giving you an even function. So the probability density for every harmonic oscillator wave function always gives an even function. So our normalization integral for any of these harmonic oscillator wave functions, the integral from minus infinity to infinity, psi star of n times psi n dx is equal to 2 times the integral from 0 to infinity psi n star psi n dx. All right, what about some expectation values for position and momentum? Well, for x, that operator is just multiplying times x. That's an odd function. x squared, multiply times x squared. That's an even function. Uh, momentum is minus ih bar, first derivative with respect to x. Minus ih bar is a constant, so that's even. But we saw in the previous video that the derivative operator is odd, so even times odd gives odd. And for momentum squared, minus i, sorry, minus h bar squared, second derivative with respect to x. So that's an even function times an odd function squared is an even function, so even times even gives even. So the expectation value of x is this integral, the integral from minus infinity to infinity, psi n star, x psi n. So that's either e, uh, even times odd times even, or it's odd times odd times odd. Both of those give you odd functions, so the result, without having done any integration, which will save you a lot of time on homework and on tests, is equal to zero. So the expectation value of position for our harmonic oscillator is right at zero. It's right at x equals zero, right at our equilibrium bond length. For momentum, that's this direct integral in direct notation, which is integral from minus infinity to infinity, psi star n, momentum operator, psi n. So that's going to give us even times odd times even, which is going to give us odd, or it's going to give us odd times odd times odd, which is also odd. Either way, this gives us a result of zero before we've even done the integral. 
the expectation value for momentum in the harmonic oscillator is zero. The particle is equally likely to be moving to the left or to the right. Our bond is equally likely to be stretching or to be compressing. So that's for position and momentum. For position squared and momentum squared, that's going to be an even operator in each case. That will result in an even function for each of these. So we don't get off so easily of being able to not do the integral. We would have to do the integral from zero to infinity. We would just have to multiply the result by times two in the end. So often, if you're looking at in an integrals table and you're looking for the integral from minus infinity to infinity of something and you can't find it, look if the integral from zero to infinity is there and think about whether or not you're looking at an even function because sometimes they do that shortcut where they only include this one if it's an even function and you just multiply it times two to get the value from minus infinity all the way up to infinity.